Today we're pulling the glass out of the 442, stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and we are pulling the glass out of the 442 as part of the restoration project on this car. And I went out on the old interwebs there on Amazon and picked up this fancy set of tools for $28. It's called Billy Tools, B-I-L-I-T-O-O-L-S. I'll put a link down in the description below. The big thing I wanted out of this though was the piano wire with the handles. It makes it a lot easier. You're gonna need two people for that. It does have the pull cutter. I don't necessarily advise using this. This is a tool that you can use as a single person to get a windshield out, but you're probably gonna break the windshield in the process. Just be aware. If it's not an issue, if it's cracked already, go to town. Uh, on top of it, it comes with a trim tool, which is nice because I broke one yesterday. Uh, so you can always have some more of those. And then it comes with a cutting tool for getting in there and helping to get some of the stuff out. The big thing though is the uh, insertion tool for running your piano wire through your butyl, butyl tape. The only thing that I'm worried about is that on the back glass, it looks like they use some kind of weird sealant. So this is a process that you're gonna wanna have an extra set of hands. So I've got my father-in-law helping me out today. We're gonna be using the piano wire. It comes with some instructions that shows you how, but basically we're gonna run piano wire through the butyl tape use the handles, one person on inside, one person on the outside, cut all the way around it, and then we've got suction cups on the windshield already, and so we're just gonna lift it out and set it on a stand. Okay, let's see here. So, the way these handles work, they have a hole down in the end of them here that you're going to feed this wire through. There's a C-clip to keep that thing from popping out, so we're gonna go ahead and run the wire through one of them, and it comes out the other side. Then there's a hole up top that you run it through like that, and then you pull it tight, push it down in there, and you should be fairly locked in. Might wanna cut that excess off or bend it out of the way so you don't hurt yourself, but that's gonna give you a good grip on the wire. Now we're going to fish this side through from the inside to the outside using that tip tool. And we cut, uh, what is this, four foot or so, probably more than we need. Better safe than sorry. So we're gonna, this tip has a slit in it to get a hold of your wire so you can push it through easily. And we'll come down into the corner, go down through the butyl, and we're through. So, pull this back out, without the wire coming out, hopefully. Do the same thing with this side. I'm gonna go past where I kink that. Cut that off. Feed it through. Get in there. See, this is why I'm having surgery. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we should be able to cut this wire through. This is too long, don't you? Mm. What do you think? I don't know. Maybe just if I get inside and make it just a little better. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me get on the inside. Okay, me? Yep. You. Okay, me? Oh, you. There we go. Okay. You're on the corner? Yep. You're around it? Oh, you're hung up on, hung up you on? need to come in towards the windshield. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Try you. Down? 
Try you. Okay. Okay. There we go. We're all the way through. Got it. Well, it's a couple days later, and as you can see, the windows are out. Uh, the memory card on the camera filled up while we were taking these things out, and I just, we were in the thick of it. So I did not want to stop to swap memory cards out or anything like that. I just thought I would shoot an uh, update later on. Uh, kit worked great for the money, no complaints. The piano wire broke a couple times. I don't know if it was necessarily the piano wire's fault or uh, Bill and I's fault that we were just pulling on it too hard, going back and forth, uh, but literally it took us maybe 10 minutes for each window at the most. A couple things that you're going to want to get is some of the big red suction cups that you can put on the glass to help pull it out and transport it around. Just make sure that you clean the glass off and the suction cups off before you put them on there. And then a couple of the cheap X stands with the foam on them from down at Harbor Freight. They're like 25 or 30 bucks a pop. I went out last week and bought three of them. I've got two of them right now down in storage with the glass sitting on top of them. So they're out of the way. I don't have to worry about breaking them. But all in all for the cheap price to entry, we ended up using the T handles with the wire. I used the scraper here to uh, do a couple small things, of course, the uh, probe for pushing the wire through was great, worked like a champ. And then the clip removal tools in the car somewhere because we jerked the interior out and we were using that after that. So this is a, a pretty good deal to have around if you're going to be taking glass out of your car. Works great, it's not professional grade by any means. So if you're doing this a lot, skip this. But if you wanna do this once, maybe twice, this will get you by. And as I said, it's got kind of a nice foam backing thing. Not a case per se but at least I can throw it up on a shelf and know that everything's going to stick together. Well, the car's completely stripped uh, down now. We're just to the point of getting ready to take the paint off, do some body work. Of course, we found some rust around the back window. That was expected. Those are going to be pretty easy fixes. Uh, but now that all that's out of the way, it's going to be a lot easier to do it. We'll leave the glass out until the headliner comes in, of course, until after the car is painted. Uh, so the glass will be one of the last things that goes back in on this car. Uh, Everything's been stripped out of the interior, as I said. Next is uh, the patch panel should be showing up any day now. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the tools to go ahead and get the body prep so we can get it ready for paint. So it's coming along very well. Very happy with everything so far. The amount of rust on this car, not too crazy. I'm more disappointed in some of the shoddy patchwork that they've done. In fact, the rear floor on this, I'm going to just cut out and completely replace it with a new rear floor section because I don't know. The guy had to be one eye blind and cross-eyed all at the same time. Whoever tried to get that thing in there is just gaps that they didn't even try to fill. It's just quicker to buy a new panel, cut out the old one that they tried to patch in and put that one in. Uh, as I said, the front, all the rust on the front around the windshield trim and around the lower parts of the firewall patch panels made for those those are on the way so we'll just be cutting those up and welding those in as opposed to doing custom patches the only places that i can think of really that i'm going to have to cut some sheet metal bend it and install it is in this window channel right here there's a couple holes that i want to cut out and replace uh, but everything else for the most part is very straightforward. So I'm not going to be doing a lot of content on that because I'm not a body guy. I'm not a paint and body guy. You don't watch me to see that. You watch me to see that it can be done, that you can do it. But if you're going to do that stuff, go out there on YouTube, find the people that do this all the time, watch their videos. You'll hear me talk about that. That's what I do in my downtime. I've been watching paint videos. I've been watching uh, sheet metal repair videos, things like that. I'm not here to teach you that stuff. There's experts out there to teach you. I'm here to tell you, you can do it. So jump in there, don't be scared. It's not that hard, I promise you. As I said, if I can do it, you can do it. Listen, that's all it is for now. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.